So you should have seen a module in Learn that you can take a look at called the um, course content team. There's a new module called Microsoft Document Malware Analysis. There's a Word document inside of it, and I appreciate the irony of this, but no, there is no malware inside of the document that talks about malware analysis. There is a link to a malware in Learn in the Project 05, as always. Um, there's also another web page which gives you your last assessment, your last competency for this class before the exams. So download and take a look at that Word document, if you please. Once you have it downloaded, you will see that the file is called media.zip. Once you have downloaded, you can unzip media.zip. As always, the password is malware. And before I forget, the self-assessment is called message.zip. When you un, uh, un, un, ex, unzip it and extract the archive, there are two files inside this one. The document that I want you to run your analysis on and something called messageextract.py. This is a Python script that will allow you to recompile the executable code into something that you could take a look at inside of, for example, x32 or x64 debug or something like that. We're not going to cover it. It's out of scope, but I didn't want to remove it. If you want to take a look at it, you can take a look at it. Um, but this Python script is out of scope for today's class. If you want to, by all means, take a look at it. Okay. What I want to focus on, however, is the media.docm file. This is a document file from Microsoft Office, and it is suspicious. So we want to take a look at it. There are a few tools we're going to use today, and they're going to look very similar to the workflow that we saw when we were analyzing um, Acrobat PDF files. So let's take a look at these today. The first tool we're going to use is OLE VBA. And OLE VBA will actually extract, extract any object-linked and embedded VB or Visual Basic for Application Code inside of your document present it back to us so that we can take a look at it. Of course, the document we want to look at is the one we just unzipped from the um, BitProject 5 server, which is media.docm. And when we do that, it gives us a lot of information. Now, you could pipe the results to more or less so you could scroll through and look at it. But it's only a couple of screens long, and I've got my font zoomed out so you can really see what's going on. When we run OLE VBA against our document, it gives us a couple of warnings. We can ignore those, but right away we start seeing. To open, it wants us to call a function called H. Okay, what's function H? Here is function H where it defines a bunch of stuff that it wants to do. Not the least of which is get something called 2014.exe. So it wants to grab something executable and maybe auto open something as well, which is very worrisome. So we see right away that it wants to, anytime a document wants to grab something off the internet, alarm bells should be just screaming in your ears at that point, okay? And um, it looks like it's trying to write it somewhere and then maybe auto open it. We're not sure. It also calls the M function, which does a bunch of stuff. And we could take a look at it in greater detail, but it looks like it wants to run something here. So you should be worried about that as well. The nice thing about the OLE VBA command is that it will give us a table of stuff that we should be worried about, okay? This table includes um, auto exec code, any suspicious functions, and some interesting files that it sees, um, items of concern, executables. I'm not sure what IOC is. I thought it meant items of concern, but I just realized that that was myself putting that label on it. The old version 
of uh, Oily VBA didn't do IOCs. This is a new version associated with Remnex 7 that I haven't seen before. I'm going to have to research that further. But what I love is right away it's showing us executables. It's grabbing an executable and then it's going to try and execute that file maybe. Both of these right away should set off alarm bells in our mind. If I'm writing a report, I am certain that I'm going to embed this table in that report. Nudge, nudge, wink, wink. Are there any questions? Okay, let's move on. Um, back in the day, Microsoft Word documents were just basically binary files that had a bunch of stuff embedded inside them. More recent versions, they've become more of a container style where they're like a zip file, actually very much like a zip file that have a bunch of elements stored inside the zip file. Um, and we could see that by unzipping this file. If you do another ls in your directory, you'll see that there is the media.docm document. If we unzip that file, um, and we're going to actually send it to a directory, um, just for image, uh, just for um, file management. If we just unzip it here, we're going to fill up this directory, and maybe that's fine. If you're fine with that, by all means. But I'm going to redirect it because I have one directory for today's activities. So I want separate directories. So I'm going to send this to a directory called media. Or I, yeah, media, because that's the name of the file. All right. So I'm going to send it to media directory. Okay. Now, before our virus had a password, but there's no password in this document itself. It's just a style that Microsoft uses for storing its um, content. And when we take a look, we see all of these files that are extrapolated from this document, which is very interesting. And when I say files, I'm not exaggerating. If you bring up your file manager, go to your home directory, go to the office directory or whatever, go to that folder you just created, you should be able to go through and take a look at, for example, the image file or any other image files that might be in that document. You can take a look at the XML project documents as well. If there's a theme, there's a lot of XML in these documents, but what we're interested in, of course, is this binary document here. Um, it doesn't let us open it, that's fine. We can um, right click, um, open with another application. We can actually take a look at it inside of a text editor. Um, and that's fine, and we can do that. But we're actually going to use some other tools to take a look at it as well. Okay? Um, any questions on that? Wait a minute. Let me go through my notes and make sure I haven't missed anything. Okay, so let's go into, we're in that, let's go to media, and inside of our media we have the Word document, and inside that we've got another uh, directory called media, but this is media related to the document, not media related to the file name. We do, however, have this VBA project.bin file. So let's doing some analysis of that. There's an XML document. I mean, you could take a look at the XML documents. There may be some clues there, but let's just focus on the, the more important things. This is a binary representing, or it could be a binary representing VBA code inside of our document. So let's take a look at that, okay? We're gonna look at OL, another tool, oledump.py. OLEDump.py is kind of run in the same manner that x64dump.py was run. 
a lot of the same kind of arguments, a lot of the same kind of execution. Okay? So when we use it, I want you to think of the same way as how you were using X64 dump. Or, sorry, um, not X64 dump. Any more. Uh, Base64 dump. Sorry, Base64 dump.py. Sorry, X64 dump. Forget that. Um, yeah, Base64 dump. It's right in my notes. Sorry. The use of this is very similar to Base64 dump, not x64 don't don't worry about that but we use it with microsoft office documents rather than generally encrypted documents like we saw with base64 dump so we can say oily dump and we want to take a look at that vba project dot bin file and when we do that it goes through identifies different sections and then we could take a look at those different sections okay and like we saw with the base64 dump, there's value in reviewing the larger sections first. Okay? And that's what we're going to do. We're going to take a look at section 3, or the part identified by ID3, with the dash S switch. As you can see in your document at the top of page 4. Yep, we're almost done. Okay? So... So let's take a look at section 3 and see what it tells us. So oily dump.py dash s v as 3 and then dash v to convert it I think is what it was. Can't remember what the dash v is. I'll update my notes. But right away, well let's see what happens if we don't do the dash v. Yeah, the dash v converts it into something that's a little easier for us to read. We don't necessarily have to, though, because we right away, we start seeing suspicious code. But if possible, we we'll tell it to decode it. And when we do that, it gives us this decoded or ASCII clear to read text. And right away, we see something that is uh, pretty clear and easy to understand, something that we saw before that we're doing get and we're getting this executable as part of the h function which gets again auto called so we're seeing the same thing using a different tool that's perfect should always do that all right so let's now take a look at some other parts we have sections 6, 7, 8, and 9 that are all part of this SRP0, SRP1, SRP2, and SRP3. It's actually underscore, underscore, SRP, underscore, and then zero on up. And it, this is kind of a weird thing. The specifications from Microsoft aren't completely clear. It's um, version-dependent performance caching format. But basically, at the end of the day, this is where we sometimes see compiled code that we may want to take a look at. And that's what we're going to do here. We're going to take a look at section 6 and see if it gives us anything meaningful. So let's do that. Dash S6. And again, we see something a little bit different this time. Auto open shell script. And then here we are, we're getting HTTPS Dropbox user dot Dropbox user content dot com. And then we're getting something called king dot exe. Let's see if we can't clean that up. No, it's not going to let us decompress that. Is there another way of decompressing that? But it, it doesn't matter. Right away, we see something near the bottom. Um, it's trying to grab something from HTTPS uh, Dropbox user content, and it's called working.exe. And then it's opening and maybe sending it. There should be a way of analyzing that further, actually. Hmm.
Uh, if I can think of it, I'll add some notes for you guys to take a look at. But I thought there was a way of taking a look at it using... I'll, I'll get back to you with something else. There's a way of telling it to use um, Unicode, and maybe we could use Unicode to decode that, but we'll not worry about that right now. This is enough. Right away, we see that there's something called um, download from from the directory download.dropboxusercontent.com and then it's working.exe. So I would include that in my analysis as well. Once you've uh, taken a look at the content of this file, um, ole.dump.py, you can also use the strings command to take a look at the content of um, the binary, just like we'd use the strings command to take a look at executables before. As always, we can actually have it return anything over the default, and I believe the default is like four, four characters or more, it returns a result. And if we tell it to uh, give us the strings of our file, first it gives us a lot, but right away we're getting an indication of that 2000 or 20014.exe. So running the strings command on these is very, very handy. And with the strings command, you can actually also tell it to decode Unicode. Encoding is equal to L is, I believe, the argument that you specify. Perfect. And when we tell it to not just take a look at ASCII code with the strings, but to look at Unicode as well, we see some different content as well as that, that download the Dropbox user content.com, which kind of looks like, it looks like Dropbox, but I don't know if Dropbox user content.com is actually a real um, Dropbox domain name. But again, by taking a look using strings, we get confirmation as well as other, like we see before, of these um, possible um, embedded calls that it's going to try and take advantage of. And right here, we're seeing our working.exe. So as well as the other commands we took a look at today, don't forget the strings command as well.